Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, you will learn how to use a positional servo motor. This is a small type of motor that can rotate about 180 degrees, and you can use an Arduino to control its angular position. This is in contrast to a continuous rotation servo motor, which rotates continuously, and you can use an Arduino to control its speed, but you cannot control its position directly. We will have another video in our Intro to Arduino series that covers continuous rotation servo motors. But for now, let's talk about the positional servo. So I've unplugged the servo here, and you can see that this servo has a cable with three wires. And you need to be a little careful because the color coding convention for the wires can vary between manufacturers. In this case, orange is the signal that's going to control the servo's angular position, red is power, and brown is ground. But again, that can vary based on the manufacturer, so you need to make sure you look up the convention for the servo you are using. You will also see that this cable has female ends, and well, technically you can take a jumper wire and press it into one of those holes and then connect that either to your breadboard or directly to your Arduino. It's a little neater if you get some male, male header pins like these and clip off a set of three of those which will fit directly into the end of the cable, and then you can plug the cable into your breadboard and use jumper wires to make connections to the rest of your breadboard and to the Arduino. Let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the code. You can find example code for controlling a servo motor by going to File, Examples, down to Examples from Custom Libraries, Servo, Sweep. This will open the code I was just running that makes the servo oscillate back and forth. Let's take a look at this code line by line. This code uses a custom library called servo to control a servo motor with the Arduino. You need to start out by including that library. You then create a servo object that you can give a custom name, such as my servo, or if you were using multiple motors, you could call it servo1, servo2, etc. This code then creates a position variable that we will use to control the angle of the servo. In the setup function, we need to use the attach command to tell the Arduino which pin we will use to control the servo. In this example program, they have chosen pin 9. Then, in the loop function, there are two for loops. The first one increments the angle one degree at a time, and the second one decrements the angle, so going from 180 back down to zero, one degree at a time. In each of those for loops, we use a write command to write the position variable to the servo so it will move to that angle, and then have a short delay so the servo has time to move before we go through the loop again and move to the next position. So here's a challenge for you. Try to edit this code to slow down the rotation of the servo. Pause the video here, give it a try, and then upload the code to your Arduino. There are two different ways we could control the speed of the motor using this code. One is to change the increment for the position variable. If we wanted to increase the motor's speed, we could increase this number up to a certain limit where the motor physically cannot go any faster. However, since this is an integer variable and it is already only equal to 1, we cannot make it any smaller because the integer variable cannot store decimal places. They just get truncated or chopped off. So for example, if I tried to make this 0.5 to make the angle change more slowly, this would get, just get chopped off and be 0 and the motor would not move at all. So if we want to slow the motor down more slowly than it's already going with the example code, we have to do that by increasing the delay. For example, if I double the delay to 30 milliseconds, then I would expect the motor to move at roughly half the speed. For example, here on the left, you can see the motor moving with the original 15 millisecond delay, and on the right, you can see it moving with the slower 30 millisecond delay. As you may have noticed, the servos might not have a full 180 degree range you will need to check the datasheet for your servo to find out the actual range. You can account for that in your code. For example, let's say that your servo only rotates 160 degrees and doesn't have a full 180 degree range. 
You could just leave your code as is and remember that when you use the write command to send 180, your servo is only going to rotate 160. However, that's not that convenient if you want your code to be able to control the actual angle of the servo. So you can get around that using the Arduino map function, which maps a variable from one range to another range. So for example, I have changed this for loop to use a new variable called actual angle that is only going to count up to 160, but then I use the map function to map the actual angle variable, which has a range of 0 to 160, to a new range of 0 to 180 for the position variable. So when I want to rotate the full rotation, I am still sending 180 to the servo using the write command, but I am controlling the actual angle variable, which corresponds to the actual range of my servo. If that's confusing, another way to think about it is that the Arduino does not know the true range of your servo. The servo library always assumes the servo has a range of 180 degrees. So to get your servo to rotate to its maximum range, you will always need to send it a 180 with the code, even if the actual range of your servo is smaller. So if your servo has a range of 160 degrees, and you only send it 160, it's going to rotate some value less than 160. So you have to send 180 to get it to rotate the maximum amount, but as demonstrated here, you can use the map command if you want to control a variable for the actual angle. Now there is a caveat to using the servo library, which you can read about on the official Arduino website. This library makes use of timers, which are an internal function on the Arduino, but timers are also used for other things like controlling the analog write command. So if you scroll down on this page, you will see a warning that the library supports up to 12 motors on most Arduino boards and 48 on the Arduino Mega. However, on boards other than the Mega, the use of this library disables the analog write command or PWM functionality on pins nine and 10, whether or not there is a servo connected on those pins. So on the Arduino Uno, you still have four other PWM pins available. So if you were planning on using one of them to do something like fade an LED, you would need to select a pin other than nine or 10 if you're also using a servo motor. That is a relatively quick intro to these small but convenient and relatively easy to control motors. The final thing you might want to think about is how you are physically going to attach the motor to whatever you're building. And again, this may vary between different servos or different manufacturers, but most of them will come with mounting holes that you can use to screw them down to whatever you are building. And then this plastic part called a servo horn, which may be metal on more expensive servos, pops on to the motor shaft. You can permanently attach that to the shaft with a screw. And then it has a variety of mounting holes that you can use smaller screws to attach them to whatever you're building, like for example, a robot arm. Check out the video description for links to our other Arduino tutorial videos, and check out the next video in this series for an overview of continuous rotation servo motors.